The first Noel the angel did say. Show. Hello everybody, welcome to the Martin Cobain Christmas Show. Thank you for listening. We've got a fun, festive-filled episode for you coming up shortly. Um, I'll just tell you a quick joke. You may think it's a Christmas cracker joke, but trust me, it's not. Did you hear about the bloke who fell while decorating his Christmas tree? He landed on his baubles. His testicles are completely fine, though. Right, let's get on with the show. Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the Robert Baker Report, the show which goes undercover to investigate the illegal and immoral practices of businesses. Today's investigation delves into a terrible hive where uncontracted workers are underpaid and overworked. We are here in the North Pole, visiting Santa's workshop. The working conditions here are bad. It's freezing outside. The only salvation comes from brightly coloured wooden huts. Let's go into one of them. Here we are, in the belly of the beast. I look around and I'm surrounded by small children working their hearts out. Hey, we aren't children. We're elves. What are you doing here? I'm Robert Baker of the Baker Report. You work here, do you? Yes, we all do. And have any of you signed any contracts allowing you to legally work here? Contracts? Why would we need contracts? For protection insurance purposes. Oh, we don't need that. So this place is not insured? No. And you're not part of any workers' union? No, but I am a member of the Beano Club, if that helps. Tell me, are you being paid? No, we don't need money. We would only spend it on sweets and sugar products. How many hours do you work? We work until all the toys are made, however long that takes. We lose track of time because we are busy having fun. I think I'm beginning to get a good idea of the hell of Santa's workshop. Can you take me to speak to Santa, please? Well, I'll try. He's very busy at this time of year. Let's see if he's in the stables. Follow me. Okay, so we are walking through with the workshop to some stables. Every single elf I see is happy. Can't help but wonder if it's because they are on crack or heroin. Here we are, the stables. Santa? Santa, are you here? Oh, my. It's worse than I thought. You keep animals here? Oh, yes. They're the reindeer which Santa uses for his sleigh to deliver all the toys on Christmas Eve. So these poor animals are used to pull Santa around the world all on one night. Poor creatures. What's wrong with this one? He looks like he has an infected injury. Oh, that's Rudolph. His nose is always like that. So he hasn't been treated by a doctor, then? Why would he? Rudolph is fit and healthy. His bright nose shines the way for Santa. Did somebody say my name? Are you Santa Claus? Ho, ho, ho. That's me. Miss Claus, this is your workshop, is it not? Yes, it is. I'm Robert Baker of the Baker Report. I have been taking a look around your workshop, and I have found unpaid, overworked, uncontracted elves who are possibly addicted to drugs working in a sweatshop. What do you have to say about that, Mr. Claus? How can it be a sweatshop? We're in the North Pole. It's freezing outside. Ho, 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 ho. What do you have to say about the mistreated animals here, one of which is seriously ill? Do you have a joke about that one, Mr. Claus? Well, let me see. I wonder if they can take my weight. Mr. Claus, please get off that reindeer. Mr. Claus, can you please answer my question? Mr. Claus? Well, I have one thing to say. Yo! <laughs> Mr. Claus, <laughs> Mr. Claus, <laughs> Mr. Claus, are the toys completely safe? Do they have the kite mark? Have they been tested? Miss Claus! He's gone. Looks like we'll have to try and confront him again another time. <laughs> The year is 1984. 
Bob Geldof assembles an emergency meeting of all figureheads of the music industry to launch a revolutionary idea. Gentlemen, Major of Ultrafox, Bono of U2, George Michael of Wham, Boy George of Culture Club, Sam Bon of Duran Duran, and Tony Hadley of Spandau Ballet, thank you all for coming here today. I have gathered you all here to fight the injustice going on in Africa. I believe we can help. How can we help? We will write and perform a song for them. That sounds great. But how can it help them? Don't you see, Simon? It might make them happy if we sing a song for them. I've never thought about that before. They might really like our music. We could take up some of our LPs. I think they would love True. Yeah, might cheer them up a bit as well, just in time for Christmas. Shut up, Hadley. We won't be doing a song for them but on behalf of them, about them. We can release a record, then put the money of all the sales of the record and use it to help the situation in Africa. Wow, so it would be like some kind of supergroup. Exactly, George Michael. We can combine our powers. We'd need a cool name, though. Something like Ultra Wham Duran Boomtown Ballet Club. What about you two? Well, I'm a member of Wham. Remember, Bono? No one meant us. Well, you said you too. They have completely different meanings. I meant my band, you too. Silence, gentlemen, please. I think our name should be the Injustice Squad. You know, as we're all fighting injustice. But don't you think people will get the wrong impression, Boy George? It sounds like we're representing injustice. Yeah, Mitch is right. If anything, we should be the Justice Squad. Or the Musical Justice Band. Would everybody shut up? I already have a name for it. Band-Aid. Because, you know... We're a band playing music to get aid to Africa. Whoa, hasn't Africa already got an aid problem as it is? Shut up, Hadley, not that kind of aid. <sighs> but also, Band Aid, it's like the brand of pastors in the US, and it's like we're healing the world. Will everyone get that gag though, Bob? I mean, we don't have Band Aids over here. Yeah, we could call ourselves the Lassaplasts. Or just call ourselves Plasters. Plasters for Africa. We're calling it Band-Aid, and that's the last of it. Right. So, now we just need a song. Something real. Hey, I know a good rhythm we can use. It goes like this. Ba-bum. Bum, ba-bum. Pachow! No, Midge. Let it go. We could do a Christmas song. Oh, but we've just done a Christmas song. How have you, George? When's that coming out? Christmas. Oh. Actually, that's a great idea, Tony. We'll do a Christmas song. But uh, what about mine? What's your song called, George? Last Christmas. Yeah, well, bet you wish you released it last Christmas now, too, don't you? It's okay, George. I know how you feel. It's not easy. Oh, Midge, leave it. It means nothing to you, does it, Bob? Don't. It means nothing to you. Ah, ah shut up, your face. <laughs> now I know why I like that song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love Christmas, me. Yeah, so do I. You know what I love best? The crackers. I love putting a cracker at Christmas. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> it's fun, isn't it? A simple pleasure. I love putting a cracker that bangs. <laughs> yeah, I like them. Especially if they've got toys in them. You sick pervert. What? What did I say? You always have to go too far, don't you? Ho ho ho! Now to deliver another present. There. Ah! Uh, are you Santa Claus? Oh, well, yes. Yes, I am. I hate it when this happens. <laughs> What's your name? Sarah. Sarah. You have been a good girl this year, so go back to sleep. Christmas morning will come soon enough. Okay. Merry Christmas, Santa. Merry Christmas, Sarah. Mr. Claus, stop. 
It's Robert Baker of The Baker Report here. We meet again. Are you ready to answer my questions yet, Mr. Claus? Oh, no, not you again. Why don't you just leave me alone? Santa, did you just break into this property? What is that you've placed under the tree? Is it a bomb? Mr. Claus, why are you avoiding all these questions? Well, look over there. What? Ho, 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 ho! Oh, he's gone again. I think that says everything about his guilt. I have been Robert Baker, and this has been another Baker Report. Goodbye. <laughs> Excellency Clark, the unopposed ruler of the seven galaxies and conqueror of all life within them. Oh, hello, boy. How's things? Sire, I have the latest galactic report for you. Oh, okay. Give me a summary. Well, the majority is fine. The economic rate is high and prosperous. Employment levels are at 100%. We did have a slight altercation on the planet Clarence Three, in the system of Tyrion. Oh, really? Why, what happened? Uh, just a single uprisor trying to sully your name and garner support for a rebellion. Really? This is great! You know how bored I've been. I hope he makes a good fighter. We will never know. We dispensed justice on the spot, and liquidated him to stop any further treacherous ideas. Oh, why did you do that? I have had nothing to do since I conquered the Seven Galaxies. I was expecting someone to stand up and rebel, but no, nothing at all. I even tried to make life hard for them, in the hope that some plucky young hero would rise and challenge me for freedom. But it doesn't work. They all just accept it. Our polls do report that you are very popular, and the people favor you highly, regardless of the oppressions that they face. Exactly. Why? It's like... It's like... Do you remember last Christmas? No one knew what to get me, to offer as a present, as I already have everything. So someone gave me a rock from their home world. I mean, what do I want with a quarking rock? I even said that aloud to him. What happened? I threw it at his head. I thought at last someone will challenge me for doing that, maybe start a fight in the throne room. And? He just bowed, saying, I am obliged and happy that your worship liked the rock so much as to use it immediately. It made him bleed and everything, you know. So, shall I cancel Christmas? Oh, now oh, that's an idea. Oh, that's deliciously evil. That should be just the ticket for someone to stand up against me. I shall make the announcement now. Now hear now this. Hear this. Hear this. Great Clark has declared that as of this moment, Christmas shall be cancelled. Clark wishes it, so it will be done. Hail Clark, ruler of the seven servants. Well? Initial reports are coming in. Suggests that... Everybody is rejoicing. It would seem you have removed the pressure of having to get you a gift. Plus, it also removes the chances of any family arguments over the Christmas time. Your subjects are hailing you as the greatest dictator ever. What? Oh, come on! Hey, Santa! Santa! Oh, why, hello, Elfton John. How are you? I've got a new song to sing you. It'll be a hit. It's called Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Can I sing you a verse? Sure, go ahead. <laughs> he's making a list. He's checking it twice. He's gonna find out if you've got head lice. Santa Claus is coming to town. Well, yes. Um, one question. What's with the head lice? Well, that's your list, isn't it? All those people out there, you check if they've got headlights or not. 
No, it isn't. Why would I want to check that? Oh, I don't know. You know, it is something you should actually think about, though. You don't want to start an epidemic here in the workshop. Don't you mean epidermis? Ho, 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 ho. Well, what is the list for, then? It's a list which tells me who's been good or bad. Let's make a list of it needs work. Yes. Eh, you right, Barry? No, not really. I feel a bit bad. A bit guilty. Why? What's happened this time? Well, you know how I wanted to break up with Melanie? Yeah? Well, Dave said I should do it like a band-aid. Right, so what happened? Well, I phoned round and got all my mates to come over and write a song, and I flew Phil Collins over from America. I then performed this song for her, which went like this. It's Christmas time. Uh, We've been together for quite a while. Uh, At Christmas time. Uh, we fight like uh, we're on Jeremy Kyle. But we can be happy if we're left to ourselves. Well, tonight I'm breaking up with you. Let's break up. It's not because of you, it's because of me. So let's break up. It's not because of you, it's because of me. So let's break up. It's not because of you, it's because of me. So, so does that sound bad to you? Um, yeah, just a bit. The Martin Kilbane Christmas Show was written by and starred Martin Kilbane. Music also by Martin Kilbane. The songs Do They Know It's Christmas, Vienna, and Santa Claus is Coming to Town are used for parody. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.